Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, I'm gonna show you how to make and use royal icing. So let's get started. For this classic icing, you'll need three egg whites, some powdered sugar, flavoring, I'm using vanilla, and if you're dyeing them, you'll wanna get some food coloring too. First off, we're gonna separate our eggs. We want three egg whites for this recipe. And yes, you can double it if you're making an extra big batch. You do not want to break your yolks though, so be very careful. If you like to use an egg separator, go ahead. I find that clean hands work really well. Okay, I'll do the best practice. Best practice is to add the egg white into the bowl one at a time, just in case the unthinkable happens and a yolk breaks, you won't be brokenhearted. <laughs> Royal icing does use raw eggs. If you have any concerns, go ahead and pasteurize the eggs. It's really easy. Just bring a little pot of water to 140 keep it at 140, and then you're going to just dip your eggs in and let them sit there for three to four minutes. Last yolk in. Okay, that's set aside, we'll use those later. Egg whites into the bowl. Pull that mixer towards you. You're gonna mix these until they're frothy, and I should have said earlier, make sure your bowl is nice and clean. You don't want any residual frosting, that's not a good idea. If you're extra concerned, you can wipe it down with some vinegar. You'll always know it's squeaky clean. We're gonna mix this. And by the way, you can definitely use hand mixers if you prefer. You're just gonna be sitting there for a few minutes, so yes, you can. Wait, I just realized since we're doing things the right way so you can have the best result, let's sift our confectioner sugar. It's not a must do, but it's just gonna be kind of annoying if there's any lumps, even though they should get worked out, but should is not my favorite word. We want one pound or 450 grams of confectioner sugar. Royal icing is one of those really intimidating things. I have to tell you, I was not a good cookie decorator for the longest time. So I did a little bit of practice, a little bit of reading, and it's actually much easier if you just follow a few easy steps. Back to mixing, this is all measured out. And as you can see, I actually mixed it for a minute already. These eggs are nice and frothy. So we're gonna slowly add our powdered sugar in. Just let it mix in. If you see that it's like a wall of powdered sugar, you can just scrape it down, but it should work itself out. This is like an episode of I Love Lucy. Oh my gosh. Last my powdered sugar is going in. I'm just mixing it on low. I'm gonna give it one final just tamp down. Once this is fully incorporated, we're gonna move it up to medium high and beat for about three to four minutes or until stiff, shiny peaks form. I'm gonna show you what that looks like though because they need to be stiff and shiny. I see some sugar on the bowl. I need to tamp it down. By the way, if you just dumped the sugar in, you would lose a lot of volume, so you don't wanna just dump it in. With any kind of egg sugar situation, you always add the sugar in slowly. Right now, I just want to check. This is like, it's looking shiny. Definitely not stiff, is it? Nope. So we're going to keep going. We're pumping air into this. We're volumizing it. We're making it really like luscious in the texture. And it's going to be amazing. While I'm at it, let's add that vanilla. You could also use almond extract, lemon extract, whatever you want. Just one teaspoon or a little bit less is fine. Here we go. Medium high, stiff and glossy. We're gonna check back in on this. Checking back in. Ah, look at this. This is nice. See, that is fairly stiff. I like that. You can see it's holding its shape. It's stiff and glossy. That's what it looks like in the bowl. This is gonna be so great to do a consistency that's uh, for outlining. When you make royal icing, you have two types. One's for outline, one's for flooding. This is the outline batch. We're gonna add water, but just a little bit later on to make the flooding consistency, and you'll see how that's different. Many times, the cookie just goes like this, and it's all gonna just flow out and look messy, so I'll show you how to do it the right way. For now, we're gonna grab some cookies, which I baked ahead of time, so they're nice and cool. These are using my really easy cutout cookie uh, recipe, so you can click up here for that. Beautiful straight lines, delicious too. You want your cookies to be cool, and now 
choose the colors that you want. Today, today I'm gonna make some snowmen, some Christmas trees, and some snowflakes. So really I want white, green, red, black, orange, and like, I want like a lot of green, a lot of white, a little red, a little black. So I'm gonna divide this into bowls and get to work. We're all gonna choose our color first, then change the consistency. And by the way, if you need to step away for any time, like the kids are calling, you have to do something. Just cover this up, you can use plastic or whatever, and just make sure it's airtight. Because if you don't, this will dry out, you're not gonna be happy. So. First off, the easy one is your white outlining frosting. So go ahead and we're icing. We're gonna add a small round tip, it's like a number two, three, or four. All those will work. In a pinch, you can definitely just cut the tip off of a piping bag or even like a regular plastic bag. However, you're gonna be happier if you use a round tip. It's just cleaner and less frustrating. You don't need that much frosting for the outline, so just grab, oh, a quarter cup or less usually. And you can see that, look at that wonderful texture. It's like marshmallow, it's very nice. This is ready, perfect. It's gonna stay in here just like that. Now we need our flooding consistency white. That's gonna go into a bowl. We're using more this time. This is for all the snowmen and snowflakes and that sort of thing. For other colors, we're just gonna use one batch. We're gonna dye it first. Once you're doing this, work with purpose. Don't walk away and do other stuff because it dries out so quickly. Look at these beaters, or this beater. Totally dry. It's set up quickly, so we always cover it and just don't walk away. Just like the song says. Some of the batches are gonna be really small, like for the orange noses for my snowmen, and some will be a little bit larger, so just know what you're gonna pipe and kind of guesstimate it out. And you can always leave some royal icing in reserve. Cover that back up, it's my emergency icing. And now one note about coloring. If you just run your mixer with a color on, you wanna make a big batch, don't do that. Just use a spatula to mix it in because this is not egg white, it's not sugar, and you don't want to beat it up too much and uh, incorporate things that you don't want there. But I actually want to add in just a hint of black, a tiny little drop. All right, now we're gonna mix this up and just fold it in. Using black just tones the colors down, makes them a little bit more appealing to the eye, but it's totally up to you. And I'm using gel food colorings. That's in the description box if you wanna pick some up, but they're um, much more concentrated, which I love because you're not adding a ton of water in. Now, pop in that piping tip. This is a number three. So to outline these trees, I'm not gonna need a ton. That is ready to go. And now I need to add a little bit of water. So if I drizzle some of this icing over, you can see it's totally just maintaining its shape. It's not even oozing back into itself. See that? That's not flooding consistency. Flooding consistency will spread out and relax. So let's grab a teaspoon. I'm gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of water. Just a little bit. It's, like an, it's a stingy quarter teaspoon too. It's like maybe like two really heavy drops of water. And we're gonna stir this in. I'm adding the remaining drop of water. It seems silly, but this is what gets you. This is one of the pain points of royal icing, is finding that right consistency and just not getting frustrated because if you have to add more royal icing back in, you change the color, so you have to add more dye in, which just sucks. You don't wanna do that. So slow and steady will win the race. This is what you should be looking for. Let the icing drizzle back in and it should flow and disappear. That is ready. Now we can transfer this to our piping bag and repeat that process for all the other colors. If you're running out of piping tips, this is a great time just to snip the tip off, or if you wanna use a piping tip to have more control, go ahead and use something like a six. It's a larger circle. See, I see you. When we get to the piping, I'm gonna show you some really important tips that have saved my life in decorating cookies. So just hang on for that orange for the nose, and now we can get to decorating. So grab a comfy spot and let's go. So 
when you decorate your cookie, do not touch the piping tip to the cookie. It should have an edge that just trails over. Say where your want, line wants to go, follow the edge, and this is your outline consistency, and so it won't, it won't really droop or spread very much. Okay, one outline's all done. Now flood it right away. You could let this sit out for a second, but you don't really need that to do that. This is where you really wanted that larger piping tip so that it will let the icing come out. But you do not want to overfill your cookie because if there's a critical mass of that royal icing on top, it's gonna spill out over. So use as much as you need, but don't go crazy. And any little gaps, you can use a toothpick or a pin and just fill them in and I'll show you what that looks like. That looks pretty good. We're gonna set this aside, but while that sets, you can start your snowman. We're just gonna outline it and fill it up again with one color. That star's a little tricky. Oh my God, that was really bad. So it's okay if it's really bad. You can do this. You just start over. That's okay. Things like this happen. This is the nice part about the royal icing, so. There we go. That didn't happen. What are you talking about? <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> I have to concentrate, I can't look at you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna fill this up, and you can see this is really flowy, so we just want to get it out. And if you have shaky hands, you can, like me, you can use one hand to steady yourself. Okay, this looks crazy, it looks bad, but then what you can see, and you might have seen this on the videos, is use a skewer, toothpick, or a pin, and you can just remove any holes and even it out, and there we go. You can also encourage the flooding icing closer to the edge so you don't see that line. Put these out of the way. When they're wet, they are very endangered. So just set them aside where you can't nudge them or your sleeve can hit them because that's where you, that's where you get a little sad. Stockings are nice and easy. We're just going to give it a white fur top. And then one thing that you can do here is use some sanding sugar, sprinkle that on top. So here you have a lot of beautiful texture and sparkle and it'll hide any mistakes that happened. <laughs> Once your icing sets up, you can add more colors next to it and not worry about anything bleeding in. The green icing set up, you can see it's nice and matte now. You can also touch it. So we're gonna add some ornaments, just some simple red dots. We'll do amazing things. So hover above and you'll see they really are super 3D and stand out. That looks so cute. If I dropped it, I would be so upset. Look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to give these out in little gift boxes. All right. <laughs> it didn't break. My snowman set up, outline the hat, and then we're gonna fill it in. Cute. <laughs> and now it's time for the detail work. For this guy, I want him to have a face, a scarf, and some buttons on his body. So, uh, I need three buttons. We're gonna pipe a little carrot nose too, so just pipe that in there. I did it, oh my gosh. And if you want, you can just like finesse it a little bit more. I'm gonna use a needle for this one. That looks cute, oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, the last thing is the scarf. So he has a very short neck, but we're not gonna judge him for that. He does wanna stay warm leaving a gap, you're gonna see why. We'll come back to it with the magic of editing. <laughs> um, this guy is so easy. So we're gonna flood an outline for my stocking. Now that the rest of the scarf is set up, I can just do a nice little overlapping bit here. I love this Christmas tree, but the snowman has to be my favorite. Look at that. You can let me know in the comments who you love best. <laughs> this one's for me. This one's for me. Hey. Bye-bye. <laughs> My snowman. It tastes delicious and it makes a perfect gift. If you like this recipe, check out my holiday playlist.